All right. So uh, let me put also in case some of you. Okay. So uh, exercise. This is the fourth session of the day, first day. Uh, now what we're going to be using is the Android for the first time. We have been tweaking the server. So in the first session, there was a demo of how the application looks like, what you should expect from this training during the week, what are the things you will be doing. On the second session, we saw uh, the WHO um, recommendations implemented in the HIS2. And in the previous session, session number three, we have seen how we can start playing with this program according to our needs, what can we do? And now we are gonna start seeing the reflection of those changes on the Android device. So one of the requirements for this training, to follow this training was to have an Android device, could be a phone, could be a tablet. And in case you don't have any of those, we also told you that you could use an emulator. It is mandatory to have one of these devices because you are gonna be doing exercises and these exercises need to be submitted. So we need to see the screenshot that proves that you have acquired knowledge. So by the end of this session, so this session is gonna be again 45 minutes. Usually I will be talking for 20 minutes, maybe even less this time. And you will have the remaining time half an hour, a bit more to complete the exercise. In this exercise, as I'm putting here in black, let me see if I can put, yeah. You need to submit the results for evaluation. So as you know, this is an academy where we give some theory and we expect you to do some practice. And this practice is evaluated by the submission of the exercises. At the end, you also have an exam. And this exercises count 45% of your total grade. So by doing these exercises, we can see that you acquire the knowledge of what we have been telling you. So in this uh, session, what you will have to do is, well, first of all, we will see how to download the Android application, where you can download it from, why do we have different versions. You will need to have the application installed in your device, a set phone, tablet, emulator. You will see the program that you have set up in the previous session on your device. And you will also have to register your first DI in the program uh, COVID-19 case-based surveillance. Okay. To submit the exercises, the results, you will need to follow what is on the uh, learning platform. And I will go back to that when I have finished explaining. So having said this, already some of you tried to go a bit ahead and you were asking, I think even last Friday, hey, where should I load the application? Which one should I use? Should I load this or this or that? I told you to wait for this because I wanted to explain very briefly and we will have a session on Friday where we explain a little bit more of why do we have these different options. But we, uh, I was telling you to wait because now I'm gonna explain. And why do we have options? Why do we have these different channels of distributing and why do we have different version of the application that you can download? First of all, most of you, in case you have been working with Android, probably in, on your implementations on production, probably you have chosen to use the application that you can download from Google Play. So if you go to Google Play and you type DHIS2 Capture, you will be presented with this and then you can install this on your device. This is something that we do not recommend, even though it's a very common practice. We will see why we do not recommend this on Friday. We know that you're doing it, it's fine, but we hope that by the end of this training, so this week, you will see why probably you want to choose another way of downloading or distributing your application. In any case, another channel that we have to distribute the application is GitHub. As you know, our application is an open source application. You can see the source code of the application and we are hosting this source code in GitHub. So every time we publish a new application, we take, we compile the code from GitHub. We put it in GitHub as assets and we also upload one of these versions. We will see why now the different versions in Google Play. But if you go to GitHub, either by clicking this link that you can find or 
the one I'm going to be putting here and the one I'm going to be putting now in the Slack. So if you go there and you go to the latest release, this is not updated because we released a, a new version last week. So here now we're going to be working on 251. But you will see that every time we publish a new application on GitHub, you have the production, training, and SMS. And these are the three links you have here to download. And this is an APK, it's an Android application. And we have the production, the no SMS, and the training. So the one that makes it to Google Play is this one, no SMS. And it's because now we're still having some, um, not discussions, but let's say we are having some difficulties with Google because they, they claim that our application might use SMS, which is true. We will see this later this week, but they are still evaluating if this is the right way to put the permissions in the, in the application, et cetera, et cetera. Not big deal now. The thing is that we have these two applications, the first two ones that you can see that have the same size, and then we have the training. So for this training, this week, we are going to be using the training. And why are we using the training? Well, because training application, as you can see, it's a bit heavier than the other ones. It allows you to perform certain things that on the production one you cannot use. And this now has changed very recently, but uh, one of the main things is to take screenshots. For security purposes, we have disabled in almost all our versions to take to be enabled to take screenshots from your screen because imagine you're opening a patient and you want to take a screenshot. The Android application did not allow to do this. Now it allows under certain conditions, but with the training application, you can do. And because at this during these exercises, we're going to be asking you to take screenshots and submit them, it's better to use the training application. If you're not using the training application, you will have you will have to find a way to take the screenshot, which might entail installing other applications or using a specific software, etc. Your own store, this is something that is another download option that we're not covering here. That's the reason I'm putting italics. We'll cover that on Friday. And I'm putting here, you can have both types installed. So in case some of you are using a device that you have been provided by work and you're already using the HIS2 as an application on your project, you can have, if you want, the Google Play. If you have, a, uh, I'm going to say a work device, for example, working device, you have installed already the one from Google Play because you're working with it. You can also sell, install the training application. You can have both. Don't worry. And you can perform all these with tasks in the training and do not touch the other one. So you can have production and training install. But for example, you could not have, and they can be different versions. In case you are working now with the HIS 200 application in 251, for example, you can install the training 252, but you will never be able to have two same ver different versions of the same. So you cannot install training 2.5. One and then two five two. So, what you will have to do is basically download and install the application that I'm putting here in case you want directly the link that I have also put on Zoom and on Slack. But if you have your phone and you point on the screen and you take these QR codes, it will take you as well. They are fine, the latest release, so two five two training up and download it. If you download it, when you try to install, you might receive this message depending on your security settings on the phone or if you have previously installed something from here or not. So in case that could be the case, you need to go to settings and allow files to install applications. Once the application is installed, you should see it on your... Um, dashboard on your star screen. I don't know how to say this now. On your main screen of the phone. But also one of the things I would like to mention is that some of you will have to give support eventually in case you are managing DHIS2 Android projects. 
you will have users that might have problems with the with the application. So I think it's worth mentioning that also another way to see which version of the application is installed or how to help people troubleshoot, you can go to settings on your Android device, then you can go to apps, and then you can find the DHIS2 either training or the other one. Now you just have installed the training, so you should see this one. You will see that the logo is in different colors as the production. Production is in blue, and this one is like this. But when you access here, you have access to perform some uh, specific tasks, or you can run some tools that you might find, not tools, actions, sorry, that you might find um, useful while doing support. So for example, sometimes maybe the application is crashing, or we are, you can ask the users, or we ask you when doing support to delete the cache. Well, deleting the cache might help. Sometimes if the application has been properly not properly working or your server is not properly set up and your application is crashing maybe you find yourself in a loop so by coming here and forcing the stop or deleting the cache you might be able to work on what you were doing and putting here clear the data in red you can also delete all the data contained in the application but if you do this you will you might lose data that has not been synced to the server so be very careful when using this. But I think it's worth mentioning that this is one of the ways we use to give support and to understand how to access the application from the operative system kind of tools. So now you should have download, or you will do now in the next uh, half an hour, you will download the application you will be presented with this main screen and then you will be asked to fill this information the server url the username and the password in order to fill the url you can either access type this uh, url which is the one you have been using for the previous session but you can also use qr code sometimes you might have a very long url and you don't you want to facilitate um, the access into the server to your users. So you might create a QR code that contains basically this URL. And when you access the application, if you click on this little button that you can see here, this will open the camera. And if you point now with your devices to this, it will auto fill this information. And then you will have to use your user and password. Again, this is something that we have shared before. So I'm gonna switch tabs if I go here. For example, my user is this one, st01. This is the admin user I am using on the server side on mobile. I should use this one. So we are asking you to put this one here that you should have changed because it's one of the things we asked you to do in the previous session. So once you finish with this and you click on login, sorry, let's go here, here, this button here will become blue, you click on it, and you will access the main screen of the application. And here you should see by default these three programs. Maybe you see less, uh, depends on the setup. Also, I've taken this screenshot a bit later on the, on the training stage. But for sure, what you should see is your student number. So ST001 in this case, because I am the student 01. COVID-19 case based surveillance. And once you click here, sorry, Marta explaining uh, on her presentation that here you can see the type of TI that is being tracked. So in this case, person. So when you click here, you will see that, well, in this case, I have three people. And accessing here with a specific color that is presented here. Here I have the searchable fields by clicking this magnifying glass. And this is one of the things we're asking you to do on the previous session by tweaking the searchable attributes. This will be different for each of you. If you have, for example, put remove surname from your searchable attributes, you will not be seen searchable here. On the same way that if I could go um, to the display list, different attributes, I my, my main TI list will be different from one student to another one. 
So whenever you make changes on your server, and this is very important to know, you make changes in the server, let's say that now you say, okay, I want to change this attribute to be searchable and this one not to be, or remove this attribute or not. Your Android does not know at the moment that the server has changed. And then you need to make your Android aware of this or to retrieve the new changes that have been performed on the server. And in order to do this, what we need to do is what we call a configuration or a metadata sync. So every time you make a change on your server, you need to, as I said, retrieve the changes. And to do this, we, in the application, we can go on the main screen up here. So on the home screen, let me go back here on the home screen, we have the hamburger menu, the way it's called in Android, should open this thing here. And here there is one thing called settings. And in the settings, we will have sync configuration and we can sync configuration now. When I click here, what's gonna happen is that the Android application is gonna go to the server and it's gonna check or it's gonna retrieve all the new changes and update its local database to match the ones from the server. I'm saying that the server, the, the Android is not automatically retrieving this, but this is not entirely true because it might be the case that according to your configuration, and this we will also have a session covering this, your Android checks every day for new configuration. So at this stage of the training, we're asking you every time you perform a change on your server, go here and pull the new information by performing a sync configuration or a metadata sync, whatever we want to call it. I don't know what we have now. I don't know if it's a week or it's a day, but uh, just to be clear in this sense that if your Android, you don't change, uh, you change something in the server and you don't go to metadata sync here, configuration sync, after one week in this case, or after one day, depending how we set up, the Android also by itself goes and check for this. But because now you're making changes continuously on the Android device, sorry, on the server, we ask you to retrieve them on the, on the Android device by doing this. So I'm almost done with this, exploring the Android app. We're asking you now to play with this. Uh, Marta on the first session covered pretty much everything that you can do with the application. Now you should be able to access the server with your admin user on the server and with your mobile user on your Android device. So we're asking you to play but we're also asking you to tweak different things and see how the changes are reflected on Android. And on top of this, what you need to do, now you're gonna have 25 minutes to do this. If you don't have enough time, don't worry. You can continue doing this after we have finished with the sessions or later on this week, even though we encourage you to do, uh, try to follow uh, the exercises day per day. But the mandatory exercise you need to do, so after having played a little bit with the application, making changes on the server, seeing how these changes are reflected on the Android application, you need to do this, which is submitting three screenshots. And I will explain you how to do this now. But basically, we ask you to make three screenshots that contain this. So the TI search screen, so we need to see that when you access your program, you click on the magnifying glass, there should be there some search uh, attributes that you can search. And of course, this should match what is on the server. It's gonna match for sure if you have make changes and you have performed a sync configuration. But what we want you to do is to play a little bit and see what happens if I change this and this and this, I make a sync configuration and I see the ring, okay? The second one is that we want as, TI to be registered. So your first patient, COVID-19 case-based surveillance, you're gonna register at TI. And we want you to sync. In order to sync, you have to register the, the TI and perform a sync. To do a sync, you have two options. And Marta already covered this a bit on her, on her session. We will see a bit more later in this week, but basically, when we register a TI here, we can have some icons 
If I don't see an icon here, it means that these three people have been synchronized. If I could see uh, two arrows, like in a circular way, it means that there are changes that have not been pushed or sent to the server. And actually, if I would access this program, I would see a TI list. And in those TI lists, I would see the same. So if I don't see an icon, it means that it has been synchronized. If I see a gray two arrow icon, it means that my TI is not synchronized. And if I see other things like red or blue, it, me it means other things. So red means uh, error, blue means synchronized by SMS, whatever. So we're asking you is to register one TI and synchronize. To synchronize, you can either click the arrows in the TI or in the program, or you could come to here, settings, and perform a synchronization of the data. We have been playing with metadata. Metadata is telling the server, give me the new changes. With synchronization of data is, I'm gonna send you my local data, but also give me the data, not metadata. Metadata is configuration, data is actual content of the data. So you need to register one TI and synchronize. And we also want to see the entry form of any of the stages of the TI. We said that you can register a TI and that was enrollment, but we also saw in the two sessions before that there are some stages, we have four, this one and this one are not repeatable and these ones are repeatable. So show us that you know how to navigate here and you can fill one of these stages. That's the mandatory thing you need to submit. So three screenshots. You can take screenshots and put them in a Google Doc or in a PDF, whatever, and upload it. I will show you how to do it. Extra points. We're not gonna give you credit for this, but it would be nice if you go to take a screenshot of what I've explained you in order to do support. And I'm telling you this because I think it's very important that you know how to navigate your Android operative system to reach this. So if you can submit a screenshot of this as well, would be very good. So we know that you, in the future, in case you need to provide support, you know how to reach this, uh, this um, <coughs> screen, sorry. So this is what you need to do. That's the end of the presentation. Now you have 20 minutes to do this. Um, in order to submit the exercise, this was explained on the day zero. I'm gonna go through it again for those that were not there, but basically, <clears throat> excuse me. Basically, if you go to your learning platform on the day one, you open this tree and here you will see assignment. So today there's only one assignment. By clicking on it, here you have the explanation of the process, how you have to do it. Basically, we ask you to submit screenshots. So you need to take a screenshots into a docx or PDF, whatever you want. You can write something. So this is the explanation. So if I go down here, I see submission. So by choosing file here, I will be able to select the PDF or doc. I can write something if I want, and I can click on submit, which this button is the button and will be enabled. That's it. If you have problems regarding this, let us know. Usually we prefer Slack, as I said before, we will be looking into the issues you might have. I know that you were some of you were also having issues with the permissions. I don't know if it has been fixed already. I'm gonna be checking. And the other thing I wanted to do to mention now before I stop sharing my screen and stop the recording is that I know I'm gonna be a bit annoying with this. I'm gonna restrict it and I'm gonna try to say it many times during the day. Here, we're asking you to provide feedback. So you should have provided feedback for the previous session. By going here, you have prepared your uses. So this is the previous session. Please fill this form. If there is something that you're not happy with, you can well, mark it here. These questions are very easy to answer and quickly. 
and then you can submit comments. And also after you have completed the exercise of this session, you will have this one, Android device with that and setup, the same, same five questions plus a form where you can type whatever you want. Uh, we will take this quite seriously. Don't worry, it's anonymous. If there's something you don't like, let us know. Uh, I personally review feedback every day or every two days, and we try to improve with each, each edition. So for us, it's very valuable. We're not gonna take any, uh, if you, I mean, if you provide something that we're not happy with, it's fine. We will not know that it was you. And on top of this, I personally don't, I appreciate it even more if you tell me something that didn't go very well, because we're gonna improve through your feedback. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna stop the recording. And if you still have questions, uh, please put them in Slack or in Zoom. Uh, and, uh, let me well, go back to this. We have fixed, again, I said this before, but I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna say it again. We have fixed the slides, so I'm not gonna be sharing this the whole time. Please download the slides or open the Google Slides and have this to know what you have to submit. It's also on the submission of the exercise, the, the three screenshots you need to, to provide. So thank you very much.